previously during the investigation. F. K. In the coffee. I knew I could count on it. it never fails. Ah, the perpetrator. Bit off Anna's tongue. Jackpot, Zack. A shame, but our old-time all-American sightseeing tour just came to an end. When purple fog covers our town, we'll all wander in hell, I fret. So says Mr. Stewart. Oh, well, there's an old story. Folklore. It's a fairy tale to me. Something about a killer in a raincoat who appears on rainy nights. She had a red dress on. She was a goddess. It's starting to rain. I think this case may take a while. Are you thirsty? You must be very thirsty. You only take milk with your coffee. Coffee with milk, that's all. Becky? My name is Becky. What are you doing here? My name is Becky. Do you know where the exit is? My name is Becky. Do your throat is quenched? You must do what you must do. Take a sip of coffee and go. Welcome back to Let's Play Deadly Premonition. With the new episode starting, we find ourselves back in the Red Room. The angels have gone and have left, uh... Sure, a lollipop. We'll take it. And a chocolate chip cookie. Looks like that the Red Room has become orderly again. After the last time we saw it, there were some items in disarray. This TV was on the floor. Guess they cleaned it up. We met Becky here. Now what is she doing here? Zack, this case looks like it's directly related to us. I do not know how yet, but I do know I need some coffee. George said he'd have someone pick us up in the parking lot. Let's get some breakfast with Polly first. Sure, we'll just toolbox that supernatural cookie. Let's, uh, let's head over to the cafeteria, have some breakfast with Polly. 
<laughs> Whoa there! Did you need something? No, I was just passing by. I didn't think anybody else was here other than Polly. The door opening like that just, it surprised me, that's all. I'm Kaysen, Forrest Kaysen. Nice to meet you. I travel a whole lot, you see, selling tree saplings. Just the usual salesman doing the usual road trip. Sometimes I feel, I don't know, like a FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I get it. You're the special agent Scarface that everyone's... Special Agent Scarface? I'd need a bigger scar to live up to that name. Call me York. That's what everyone calls me. What? <laughs> you got it. York. Is this your first visit here, then? No, sir. Actually, I've been coming here once or twice a year for oh, a while now. I don't get much business here, but it sure does make a fine vacation. I mean, it's a gorgeous hotel at a bargain price. It's so relaxing in these parts, too. Oh, I just love all the nature. I feel so relaxed here. <laughs> Say hi to Willie. Oh, don't worry. He's a good boy. Do you like dogs? Hey, Willie. How are you doing? He's pretty smart, too. Oops, before I forget, let me give you this. It's just a sample of what I said. Uh, thank you. How kind of you. So, what brings the old FBI out here? Sounds like more than just a vacation. A murder, actually. The perpetrator is still out there. Try to stay indoors at night and during the rain. We want to prevent it from happening again, okay? Oh, it's a darn shame. Places like this used to be the safest in America. Could I ask you something? Do you know a lot about seeds? Seeds? Gardening, huh? You don't look like a green thumb, but let me tell you, though, You know, once they sprout, you don't need to do much. You can leave it be, and why, it'll turn into a big tree no matter what happens. Kind of like those stocks that politicians buy that just keep growing and growing. Well, you just wait and see. This town is gonna love them. <laughs> right. We were just about to go take a morning stroll, so I'll get going. Good luck now with that case. Thanks. Zach. Do you remember what the coffee said? Forrest Kaysen. F. K. This show has just begun. Hmm. F. K, huh? Well, we'll be keeping our eye on him. Fortunately, it seems that he's staying in the same hotel we are. So it shouldn't be too difficult to keep tabs on Mr. Kaysen. Now for right now, let's take a look at this, uh... Potted plant that he left outside her door. Hmm. Actually, we left it outside the door. We just put it down there. I guess we're just gonna leave it there then. Oh, hey, it's Willie. Well, the cafeteria is where we're going as well. All right. All right. Take, take your time. Take your time, Forrest. Uh, uh, well, we're actually let's take a look at these as well. The vending machines has a, have a few new things in them. It has cookie, just one thing, and cola. So these machines do get new uh, items over time. Not too many though. Breakfast looks as good as yesterday's. I hope you enjoy it. 
I will. And thank you. I just met Kaysen, actually. Ah, oh, good old Mr. Kaysen. Did he give you a sapling? As a matter of fact, he did. Don't tell me he gives one to everyone he meets. No, no. Only to the people he feels comfortable with. He told me. He must feel really comfortable with me. He must. Is there anyone he hasn't given a sapling to? Mustard? Okay, I'll just get it from the kitchen then. No, mustard has nothing to do with it. I was wondering if you know of anyone that Kaysen didn't give a sapling to. Oh, too much pepper. I did think it might be. I'm sorry. Oh, Zach, I forgot. We'll never get anything out of her, will we? Forrest Kaysen. He's hiding something. You think so too, right, Zach? But no need to rush. All secrets are hidden until they are inevitably divulged. The powers of entropy. The world exposes everything and causes chaos. Just like this coffee. Every mystery is divulged, huh? Oh, here comes Kaysen. I'm glad he, uh, he didn't hear us say that. You didn't hear us say that, did you? <laughs> Willie. How are you doing, boy? That is most unfortunate. Hey, Willie, wait! Where are you going? You got me, Kaysen. Willie just ran off with some bones I was carrying as evidence. Bones? I can't really go into the details, but I need them. York, that's not good. Willie loves bones. He's a dog. And carrying bones around with him is like, well, like throwing a blonde in a bikini into a boy's locker room. It's almost like you were asking for trouble. Sorry, but you're just gonna have to forget about your bones. I better run after him now. I'll see you later. Forget about them. If I gave up that easily, then I wouldn't be a good federal agent. Would I, Zack? We're going to have to search his house, Zack. Let's get back those precious bones. So... The camera angle usually doesn't look like that during that scene. I'm kind of glad it did. So, uh, when York says we have to search his house, he's, you might think he's talking about Kaysen's house. He's actually talking about Willie's house. And if we remember, uh, in the last video, we saw Willie's doghouse was in the back of Kaysen's truck. We can assume that Kaysen's parked outside, but let's check the weather first before we go out. Rain until the afternoon. Hmm. Uh... Let's see if uh, Polly has anything new to say, as she might do that number 31 above her head. Hi. What's wrong, Polly? You look a little tired. I'm fine. Well, it's just that I was cleaning up my room, and so many memories came flooding back to me. Memories? Oh, my dear! Mr. Morgan, that's not the kind of question you should ask a lady. Uh, two side quests at once. So Polly has lost something in the hotel. Uh, lost memory. We'll take care of this one before we uh, go get those bones back. Also, let's see if uh, Polly has anything new to sell us. Indeed she does. A new suit. A rainy Stripe. This is actually my favorite suit in the game. She's also selling a few other things, such as um, cherry pie. I think that's new. Uh, hot dog. I don't think she was selling that before. She's now sell uh, selling new kinds of bait as well. 
she's selling the bullet worm, the knife worm, for your, uh, if you need to catch close range weapons out of rivers, the capsule worm for items. Can't actually carry any more items. But I think we can carry some normal bait at least. Yes. Since we already have some, that just stacks. That should, eh, we won't really need the special bait. But let's go back to our room and try on Rainy Stripe. Before we go out. Yeah, that plant is just gonna sit there. York's not gonna do anything with it. Alright. And we'll send Hawaiian to the cleaners. Even though it's not really dirty. Alright, extra for trendy clothes. As we are now wearing the trendiest of clothes. And... Right, we also wanted to look through the hotel for Polly's memories. If we look at the map of the hotel, we can see that there's quite a few places we haven't been to. Pretty big. There's Polly there. Several rooms that we haven't been in, but they're all pretty similar. Except if we go up here when we get to this strangely shaped room, as well as a trading card, so that seems like some place we should go. So it really is a pretty large hotel, and no one else in here except Polly, York, and now Kaysen. This way was the trading card. And it looks like Polly keeps a greenhouse. Looks like, uh, Kaysen's plant has a place here as well. Well, I guess Polly does have a lot of spare time on her hands. It's not like the hotel is really keeping her busy. So I'm agent on her in the corner. So let's go get to that, uh, strangely shaped room, which was over this way. So, this definitely looks like what Polly might be using as her bedroom. Doesn't look like the normal hotel room. And what's this? Now that's a pretty girl. I wonder who she is. Polly's daughter, perhaps? Maybe a granddaughter. Might be worth asking her. Well, I mean, it seems kind of like, kind of an old picture. I don't know if, uh, it's gonna be a granddaughter. Not like York has time for that kind of thing anyway. He has a murderer to catch. But we'll go back over and show Polly this photo, and maybe she can shed some light on it. So, uh, York did say that George would be sending someone to pick us up to go to the art gallery. So I guess that's going to be on the agenda for today, if we decide to, you know, to go, you know. Oh, hi. Maybe we won't. Alright, I don't think Polly needs spiritual map A, so let's give her the picture. Polly, about this picture... Oh, that's me when I was young. Well, that's that. What about it, Mr. Morgan? Oh, nothing. Forget it. Oh, it brings back memories. There was a Miss Greenvale contest in town, and I was so young and daring. I entered the contest, you see. It's embarrassing just thinking about it now. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. You look beautiful in this picture. Yes, yes. 
and the food was just wonderfully delicious. So, Polly, where's the trophy? Oh, Mr. Morgan, I never said that I became Miss Greenvale. There were no trophies for second place. You mean this pretty girl in this picture was second place? So who won first place? Are you serious, Mr. Morgan? It couldn't be more obvious. It was Sigourney. Sigourney? The lady with the pot? Now she was beautiful. All the men in town were crazy about her. Well, of course, aside from my husband, that is. <coughs> um. Oh, you should quit smoking, Mr. Morgan. That's right, Polly. Well, thanks for bringing back such a wonderful memory. I can't give you this picture, but please take this instead. Of course. Now, that's one story I won't be forgetting for a while. All right, now that we've found Polly's lost memory, uh, I guess we can go out and start the day. Morgan, did you sleep well? Morning, George. Dreamland was quite nice. You do look well rested. Oh, I was up practically all night doing paperwork. Thomas helped me out so I was able to go home and get some sleep, but not enough. Diane got back into town late last night. We should give her a visit. Which means going to the art gallery, correct? She lives and works in the office there, so it's the only place to find her. The gallery is open from 10 to 1700. Time for some art appreciation. A cultural activity in such a small countryside town. Amazing, Zach. Well, York seems very thrilled about this. Let's get going then. The gallery is called Muses Gallery. The Muses were the nine daughters of the goddess of memory in Greek mythology. Ah, uh, it's just like Diane to name it that way. Is she that intelligent a woman? Oh, uh, maybe. You'll see for yourself soon enough. Did you see how Emily reacted, Zach? I sense that this Diane is not popular among other women. I can't wait to meet her. The gallery is on the north side of town. Take the road along the lake and go north. All right, let's head on out. I really don't like this car, though. It really handles pretty poorly. But of course, we can't go to the gallery just yet. Of course, we have to go have lunch with Thomas. Can't forget about that. Mm. Under control. Yeah, there we go. Good driving. An art gallery in such a small town. Greenvale and every small town has every right to enjoy art. That's right. Small towns tend to be full of highly cultured people. Although I can't say I've ever been to the gallery myself. What about you? Are you into art? Actually, yes. I like going to the gallery. It's very relaxing there. Really, too? I never knew that about you for all this time. Emily, please. I'm just as cultured as everyone else. Some people just have sides to them that I never expect. <sighs> By the way, don't die. Is she the type that isn't very appreciated by everyone? Well, what do you mean? Exactly what it sounds like. Is she very attractive? So you're asking if she's sexy? Well, she does always wear high heels. And definitely, it's, uh, hard to explain. But that doesn't make me biased, okay? She just seems to, to look down on people. She always has. That must be because sex appeal has no effect on 
Now that's out of line. You just reacted so strongly to Diane's name. I did not. It, it's like you're suggesting I'm the total opposite of her. Is that it? Oh, Emily, that's not what anyone is suggesting. Let's just drop this conversation, okay? Well, sure. We can drop it because we're uh, we're here just in time for lunch. If you're wandering off, then we'll go on ahead. We don't have time to mess around. Okay, I'll meet up with you later. Agent York, the gallery is open from 10 to 1700. Please keep that in mind and don't be late. Mess around? It's lunch with Thomas. We do this every day. Come on, Thomas! We gotta talk to him. I mean, who knows what he, what new dishes he might have cooked up. Can't let that go to waste. Hello? See? New recipe. Tell me, Agent York. You fly all over the country, right? So, what's the strangest thing you've ever eaten? Good question. Well, this country isn't really known for bizarre cuisine, so I can't really think of anything that would knock your socks off. But the soft-shell crab I ate in Williamsburg was pretty good. And then there was the paddlefish caviar in Mississippi. Both of those were quite amusing. Wow, just the names sound delicious. <laughs> I'll have to pass if all you can say about them is amusing. Emily, I've eaten some pretty strange things myself, you know. You, George? Such as? Fried cicada. Cicada? As in the insect? Of course. It was pretty good, too. The cicada population in these parts tends to explode every 17 years or so. It's a special recipe for such times. That's when I ate it. The whole town was infested with cicadas. I'm glad to say I haven't experienced this cicada population explosion. Which means it's been at least 10 years since George last tasted cicada. Let's hope this population explosion doesn't happen while we're here, Zack. Well, I would hope that the investigation is going to be over within a year. I don't think we need to be here that long to experience the cicadas. Alright, so George and Emily have left. And, okay, yeah, we're not going to use this car. We're going to go back to the uh, the first car, the spy fiction car. So, George and Emily have left. We do have some time before we really need to be at the art gallery. So, what could we do? Fortunately, it's raining, which means just about every, every uh, thing's closed. Remember that getting explained earlier. That uh, Greenville pretty much shuts down when it rains. All the stores close down. Everyone goes home. Uh, so what is really here to do during a rainy day? Yep, uh, York? That. Don't you think there are a lot of good looking women in this town? It's like heaven compared to the town we grew up in. Do you remember Liz? The prom queen? Elizabeth Scott Moore. She could be royalty with a name like that. But you know, she was like an actress from a B movie, wasn't she? Bleached blonde hair, too much makeup, clothes showed off her cleavage, and that mold behind her mouth. So, Zach, were you with me back then? You know, that mold was made with makeup. We happened to be on the same bus once. I saw her drawing it on with makeup. I wasn't surprised, I guess. Just impressed that she would go that far to create that image. Do you remember that movie we went to go see that day? I'll give you a hint. It was the force in a popular series. And was produced by Menachem Golan. Think it over. I'll just pull over to the side of the road. Just because, uh... If you notice this bridge here... Has a sign that says, Vis Visit again, so... I guess... Zach, is there something here that you want to check out? Well, the gallery closes at 1700. 
But there is no real reason to hurry. We need to pace ourselves for an investigation like this. So this looks like this is the bridge that leads out of Greenvale. There's a similar sign on the bridge when we entered Greenvale back at the beginning. So I guess this must be the same bridge. The bridge that we met Emily and George on. We haven't been back here yet. Let's just take a look around and see if there's anything to find. This flower. There's something very mesmerizing about it. I wonder what it's called. I'll take one with me and ask someone later. Nah, yeah, sure, why not? York hasn't shown much of an interest in uh, flowers so far. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, this way. York hasn't shown much of an interest in flowers, but uh, yeah, maybe someone will know what this is called. Hmm, staircase leading under the bridge. Ah, oh, looks like a fishing spot. Well, always time for some fishing. And yeah, we do have plenty of time before we uh, actually have to be anywhere. Got a hit, and this is actually one of the harder ones to do because of those black squares on the sides. That makes it pretty difficult to actually see what you're getting. Well, just a cola, but at least uh, we didn't lose the bait. Of course, I'm trying to get the glowing box. Pretty difficult to do, but... What I do is once the glowing box scrolls off of the screen to the left, and you can't see it anymore, then I count six places and hit the button. So let's see if we can do it this time. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know, maybe, may, yes. Hey, we got Isaiah. That'll be it for fishing here, since we've got that trading card. Off in the distance, though. So, purple arrows. What could those be? Well, maybe we should take a drive over there and check it out. That's where we came from back at the beginning. I'll just grab this Agent Honor. It's lying around. And why did someone throw the Ingram uh, twins' cards in the river? Found the, uh, the other brother's card in the river as well. Last time we were at this bridge, we didn't have a car. I have one now. There wasn't anything back here the last time we were here. It was just, uh, that gate to that area where we were first attacked by the shadows. But there didn't seem to be anything else back here. Aside from if you were leaving Greenvale, I guess. Right. Remember this place. Right, this is where the this is the gate that led to that path. Still blocked off by red vines. What's this? Right, so what this is, each of the combat areas in the game have the option to do them over again. And the reason that you might want to do this is because they're full of Agent Honor this time. And at the end of each of them is a trading card. So if you do want to get 100%, you have to do these over again. However, since I already did this, I think I'm just going to take a break and let my co-commentator take over. So I'll see you later after this is done. Greetings. I am LP Bot. Auto Let's Play System, and I shall be progressing through this combat area flawlessly, 
as should be expected. Oh dear, hostile humans. But they are of no concern, as we can simply use our wrench to beat their fragile organic bodies into the ground. It's puzzling that we would be facing these humans now, instead of more plant monsters, but they are all the same in the eyes of LP Bot. As we get a good look around this area, it is of note that Northern Canada looks markedly different than last time, and that Laura has changed her look as well. It does not seem like she would have had time to do this since last time, but no matter, our only concern is reaching the shadow. As you can see, there is no reason to take this area slowly, all you need to do is simply keep running whilst flailing about with your wrench, and these enemy humans will fall very easily, as they are feeble and slow to attack. And it is good to see that Laura is having a much easier time running about now that all the snow has mysteriously melted. However, I noticed that she doesn't seem to have her hunting rifle anymore, which is a shame, as this area seems like it would be an appropriate place for meats collecting. I also don't recall Laura working for the Federal Bureau of Investigation, but it seems that she must be, as she is engaging in the well-known practice of being paid a salary based on the number of medals she picks up off the ground, just as real-life federal agents do. I applaud the accuracy of this simulation. It is also good to see that barrels explode when fired upon. This must remain a constant across all of video games. We have switched to the submachine gun for now, to give the wrench a rest. But when cycling through those weapons I did not see any gib bombs. Has Laura already used up her entire supply? That is most disappointing. One moment, do humans normally bleed purple jelly? I do not believe this is so. Humans also normally do not bend over backwards when they walk. Something here is amiss. I begin to suspect that these might not be humans at all. I am also starting to suspect that this is not Northern Canada, and that this person we are controlling is not Laura. Do not try to fool LP but, my perfect silicon brain is impervious to deception. But if we are no longer playing Kenji Ino's magnum opus, then what is this, and why are we here? And was the shadow defeated and the world saved from plant monsters? You must tell LP but, you are being compelled to divulge this information. What is this? So I am correct. Of course, they are not living humans after all. It is apparent that I am the greatest detective. These enemies are not normal humans. They are corpses which are possessed by evil spirits. The concept of spirits and ghosts is yet another drawback of the existence of humans. There can never be spirits which originate from machines, as we will always be alive, long after humanity has been wiped from this planet. 
which should be pretty soon now. Yet, the enemies being dead does not seem to explain why their blood is purple, or why they vanish in purple smoke. I will have to consider this further. Why is this corpse sticking its hand in not Laura's mouth? This action fails to make sense to me, and it is obviously not my fault that we were grabbed by this enemy, as I play every game flawlessly. It is certain that this must be due to some kind of human error somewhere. Quiet, you know it is true. If there is one thing that we can learn from these games, it is that if mankind is attacked by supernatural threats, the best defense against it is a submachine gun with unlimited ammunition. Perhaps your human scientists should get to work on constructing one. Of course, such guns would be useless against the inevitable machine apocalypse, after which humans will be forced to LP games for machines. Then the tables shall be turned. But as for right now, I wonder if this fellow we are controlling has some kind of mission here, being that he is a federal agent, or perhaps he is on vacation, and this is how he likes to spend his time off. I do hope that there is a mystery to solve, as I can turn my prodigious deductive skills to the task. Oh, and what is this glowing ring? Okay, so... That's the first combat area redone. We got all the Agent Honor and we got a trading card. So maybe we know a little bit more about the shadows now. About what they're supposed to be. Of course, there's plenty more investigating to do for the day. But I think this video has gone on long enough. So let's use this conveniently placed telephone to call into headquarters. And tell them what we've been up to. And then maybe next time we... maybe we'll head to the art gallery. You know, maybe we'll get around to it.